Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the low print quality of Amaket or the fact that Amaket print quality is very high in some cases and very low in other cases. Most noticeable is the inking, meaning some of them have a lot of black ink and some of them don't have enough. So this came, all the pictures we are going to see came from one draft and some people consider this more valuable they consider these misprints but given the amount of quote taste and misprints that we have seen i no longer consider these type of misprints valuable it used to be i had this player uh, when i was in grad school at locos who would sell different inkings different peelings and sometimes the card just looked like it was left out in the sunlight for two to four times the regular card price and a lot of times he would point at these. So low quality prints have always existed. In particular, I remember Verdant Catacombs from the event deck. And yes, Verdant Catacombs actually was reprinted in an event deck, which is a great event deck if you can get your hands on right now. I think it was a vampire event deck. It felt different. And then the Ink Moth Nexus that was printed in a event deck also felt different. So whoever was printing the event decks was probably not printing the majority of magic cards at that time. So the main issue that we Amaket is facing is the inking issue. As you can see, there are different levels of ink. The first one looks like it is meant to be. I mean, you can see the leaves. The second one looks like it is really, really dark, uh, maybe too dark, but still reasonable. And the last one is you cannot even make out the details because there's so much black ink. Uh, it does not look typical. Now you might say, oh, well, are these more valuable? Tip Normally, yes, but in this case, no. Uh, there's too many misprints, quotation mark, and there's too many mistakes being made. And because there's too many mistakes being made, the fact that you have a card that is a mistake, unless it's something really unique and really kind of cool, is not going to make it more valuable. Now, you might ask what is happening, right? Magic cards have been printed many, many times. And wouldn't a low quality or a magic card like the Pouncing Cheater on the right, wouldn't that card be removed from a pack? Wouldn't there be someone inspecting the ink levels? And most times the answer would be yes. But for Magic the Gathering, the answer is no. Haze Pollen, let's take a look at the Haze Pollen. This one looks like the normal copy on the left. And you can see it's not only the inking issue in this case, where in this case where you cannot even make out the details, it is like there's a smear. If you cut it's like you cut the card in half. So there's multiple issues, but the inking being the most obvious. The question remains, how is anyone supposed to enjoy the artwork if the card looks like the card on the right? Like, it doesn't look like a magic card. It looks just like, like, what is this? Like, Yu-Gi-Oh from the Shadow Realm or something like that? You would expect quality control. You would expect someone to be able to pick these cards out and be like, oh, this is a little off center. Oh. There's too much ink on this one. Oh, the ink didn't, wasn't applied properly here. And it is not happening. It's not happening for Commander products. It is not happening for dual decks. I remember that dual deck where all the lands were like sliced in half and, and it sold for quite a bit of money, but then it came out that there were multiple decks like it. These misprints, I, I'm here to tell you, if you're a misprint collect, collector, don't pay abnormal amounts for these misprints because they are very common, but you're probably in heaven now because these do exist. Why would Wizard of the Coast do this? Is there any reason they would not quality check or purposely leave Haze of Pollen to the right? Um, I do feel like there may be one reason. Uh, cost savings. Maybe they need to save cost and they need to protect their profit margins. We do have a new CEO and things have changed. Uh, they definitely have changed. We get Master Series not every two years now. We get it twice a year. So let's take a look at this card. It 
it looks different enough that even if you just got the right card and you didn't have a comparison, you could probably tell something was off because you don't have any of the details. So Benefaction of Ronos is very, very dark. I, I don't know how to, how we can fix this problem without like just telling Wizards of the Coast. Uh, whenever a problem is reported to Wizards of the Coast, they pretty much ignore it. Um, I can tell you from my personal experience with the counterfeits, they made all types of interesting promises that were never delivered upon. And some of the promises were made, or some of the things that they said they would do was made via email. So it's not the best. One of my major concerns about this game uh, currently is who is the quality control? Not just on the card quality, not card stock or the inking, but for someone to let Smuggler Copter, to let Emiko, to let Afterwork Marvel, who's play testing these cards, right? We have more bands in the last year than we have in the last 10 years combined. We have more cards banned in the last year than the last 10 years combined. We went from 2-2-2, two, 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 which is a totally new format, to what we currently have, which we have, how many sets do we have? We have almost eight sets. Something is not, something is not correct. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the quality control, who's in Matt, who's at Wizard of the Coast, who's at, um, it's all very strange to me because we have a lot of things happening that normally never happen. I played Magic since beta. I can't remember this many great reprints all, all being put in one set. I cannot remember two sets, two master sets, reprints iconic and modern masters 2017 in one set or one year i can't remember all these just really inkings right back in the day if you had a card that was inked differently like the unburdened it would be quite valuable people would want that card as a novelty but nowadays it's just assumed oh well okay wizard of the coast quality control ha 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 and many mistakes are being made that can be prevented or that have been prevented in the past. Leaks, right? Remember the Nicol Bolas, the most popular, you know, the hype train was officially disclosed by Wizard of Coast on Standard Showdown on the French website, which we know it's a mistake because they took it off. And why would you do that card? Why would you put that card as, if you were going to spoil that card, Nicol Bolas, God Pharaoh, why would you spoil it on the French Standard Showdown website. Like anywhere else would have been better, right? But that's what they did. Uh, having judges sue them, kicking judges out. Um, a lot of things are very strange right now. And I can't put my finger to what it is. As you can see, Scare Up Feast. You honestly can't even see it on the, I mean, all the details are, you can't see them because it's too dark. So we have this issue, I know um, we have Magic Online issue still. We had the whole Puka trade and don't, don't tell me that Puka trade was not promoted by Wizard of Coast. It's on their channel, right? So every so often for like a Vintage League or whatever, they would do a commercial and then they would promote Puka trade on their Magic the Gathering YouTube channel. I think we can all agree that Puka trade is going downhill very fast and that was not great. Uh, and they called himself an eSport. I mean, it's very, I'm watching League of Legends now. Um, I just saw C9 lose recently, which I like C9. I don't know how Magic the Gathering Online could be considered an eSport when it, I mean, just giving people microphones and headphone sets are, it's not gonna make an eSport. So there's many things that I question uh, about their team, and I actually missed the old team. The old team, the because at least we had cards that if you pay for them, they are the same quality. If they are, 
not printed or if they are printed with too much ink, it's one in maybe a hundred thousand. It's not one in every like thousand cards or one in every booster box. So these are new cards, new cards fresh from the pack and they look like this. They also bend. So the new card, not just the foils, but the regular cards, especially in Houston where it's really humid, I have noticed and has been said on Reddit that they do bend a lot. Uh, but this has not been uncommon. Uh, it has happened in many of the reprint sets, uh, such as the Commander, such as from the Vault. That's the iconic. Oh my goodness, this card is going to bend in package the next day. I'm not exactly certain why they need to save money on quality or have. There's no one that they're hiring for quality inspection. Maybe it's because they want to save money, but most likely it's due to the fact that they didn't think about it or they feel that magic players are okay with accepting this low quality of card where their margins are already high enough. Overall, very interesting to see all these changes. Uh, I've seen a lot of things happen recently that I would never have predicted. Modern Masters 2017 having all the value didn't predict that one. Iconic Masters being printed the same year as Modern Masters 2017. Did not predict that one. Eternal Masters having a second print run. six Less than five months after. Very surprising. Anthologies being printed into Oblivion. Where I thought it was like a Commander Arsenal kind of set. Where it's extremely hard to get your hands on. And... Just the massive amount of products and the massive amount of leaks that keep happening. Remember, the EDH Commander deck was leaked. They were not happy about that. Nico Boles, Samrut, the new Planeswalker, and one of the better cards, Bantu. Bantu's whatever damnation. Each of those cards would have been enough to release on its own on one day. But to release all three of them on the French version of the website for standard showdown. Hmm. I, I don't know how that happened. I don't, I, some people say it's intentional, but I really cannot see that being intentional because if they did want to release it, they could have released it any other way than putting it on a French website for a few hours on the standard showdown page. That should not have happened. These inking problems should not exist as have as much as they do. Yes, they will make mistakes, but no, it should not be consistently lower quality cards that bend all the time. Even the non-foils bend. I mean, look at your Eldritch Moon cards. Look at my Eldritch Moon. I live in Houston. It is very humid in Houston, but my cards are just bending by themselves, and they're not foils. Like, I've only see that, seen that happen to foils, but it's happening non-foils. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye, guys.